What's good with Ian Dior? You guys fell out? I mean... What happened? It's just some business shit, bro. I don't hate nobody at the end of the day. Like, I did a lot of shit for them kids, and them kids have, like... I We did shit together that, like, changed their lives forever mm -hmm. and changed my life forever. And it's just, like, I will never let people disrespect them, mm. even though me and them may not be on, like, the best terms. But that all comes back to, like... Control shit. When you know you what I mean? When you say them, you mean Stacy as well? Stacy, they're like kids to me, bro. Like my kids. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like they're going to fuck up. And like just like a kid of yours, you know, if someone f does something that you don't necessarily agree with, you're not going to kick them out your life. It's not fuck them. But it's like they got to go learn their lesson. They got to go do it on their own. But what was the situation in terms of uh, like the business situation? Like was he formally signed to you slash 10K or what happened? He signed to 10K. Yeah, he signed straight to 10K. Didn't sign to me. Signed mm. to 10K. Why is that? Because I had a label deal. Oh, right, at that time. So I, I wasn't on the paperwork. I wasn't on shit. It just, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. So that was what? I, it's just like, bro, like whenever you're at a label and literally like I'm, I take, for example, I take Alamo Records, Lil Tecca. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hey, bro, this is, I was one of the first people to believe in Tekka. This is why me and Tekka are so cool. Mm -hmm. I was one of the first people to believe in Tekka, and I was like, bro, you're talented. And I always told everybody day one, I was like, listen, bro, this kid, Drake's going to get on one of his records one day or something. Like, this kid is a star. Mm -hmm. He's a star. He's a massive star. I brought Tekka out here, and me and Tekka worked on everything. I remember playing them the day after. You know what? The craziest studio session I ever had? Lil Tekka, the first studio session we did. We did Shots. We did Ransom. We did Somebody. We did Did It Again. We did uh, The Score. That was the craziest energy in the, the studio session? The craziest studio really? session, period. All those songs are gold. Wow. Yeah. Gold or better. And in a three-hour session. Lil Tech is one of the artists that is one of the main things that made me look at you and be like, dude, Paz can fucking pick him. Because I wouldn't have been able to tell you that, that Lil Tech was going to be as big as he was, and you saw it super early. He's just a good person. Mm. And I just, I fuck with his energy. Right. And he's my, like, aside from the music shit, like, yeah, it's cool. But me and him, we get each other. We're kind of similar in the same way. Right. Because we're kind of misunderstood by people. People just, a lot of people won't fuck with Tekka because they think that he don't like them. When in reality, Tekka doesn't like them. He just don't know them. Mm. You know what I mean? Shit like that. He has a little bit of that vibe that he just seems I mean, he like just he, doesn't he, fuck with nobody who didn't. Right. Like, he don't like the people who come around now. Like, He just seems shit. a little skeptical of, yeah. uh, of people who are trying to enter his life now, I guess. He said something to me one day. It always stuck me. He said, Taz, you know why I fuck with you? I said, what's up, bro? He said, I fuck with you because nobody likes you. <laughs> and he said that. Dead that ass. We were, out, we were out of my hot tub. No, nah, really bro. There's, there's nothing in this world that can hurt my feelings, bro. I'm from Florida uh -huh. where they jaw motherfuckers. They will roast you alive. Uh -huh. There's nothing in this world that can hurt my feelings. Nothing. I literally, he said he, he fucks with me because everybody hates me. And I know that they hate me and I still do what I got to do. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? People like try to get me out the paint. You know what I mean? People try to get me out the way. They don't like how I move. They don't like how I'm very honest and open. And I still do what I got to do. And no matter who wants me out the paint, I'm collecting that fucking rebound mm -hmm. when it bounces off the fucking rim. <laughs> that's what that's what it is. For sure. But it's like the tech and shit, bro. Like I played them all those records. Uh -huh. I sent them ransom. They said no. You sent that to Alamo? Yeah. And does that hurt that he's not signed to 10K but, now? Nah, because it, it was never about 10K. 10K wasn't even in the picture then. Right, but like in your ideal world, there's a lot of artists. Do that, I wish that Tekka was signed to me on my label? Yeah. Of course. Like I think right. he's he's one of my favorite artists. Why wouldn't I want him signed to me? But I still get to work very closely with him, and I'm cool with his whole team, his manager G, like Julian, and r everybody. I'm cool with everybody. Like they're really good people. Mm. And then the day they know what they're getting with me and I, how passionate I am about Tekka shit. Right. And I think that's we we got a good dynamic. They figured out how to make the relationship work. You know what I mean? Mm, definitely. S certain people, I think we're just waiting on me to grow up, them to grow up, other situations, whatever. Like they artists that I was on, bro. Like every artist. That I that I went and found or helped find, I got told no on. Uh. I got told no on Trevor. I was told that Trevor was just a songwriter. Mm, really? I was told that they told. I was told verbatim, he's he's ugly. He's just a songwriter, and I don't fuck with that because it's like I don't give a fuck what people look like. If you're talented, you're talented. He's ugly. Wow. That's no, crazy. he's not ugly. And Trevor is like. No, that's just crazy though because that is the kind of shit that they say. In that labels. is what labels it's say. So much about that image and say. shit. Yeah. And this isn't a diss towards any label or anybody, but it's just how people move and maneuver, like Juice. Right. I was told Juice was a little Uzi clone. 
Oh, wow. Really? By Alamo? No. This oh. is before Alamo. Holy shit. That's a bad take. If you couldn't see what Juice WRLD was doing, then you, you, you really should not be in this business. I just feel like there's a lot of people who talk shit on internet money or talk shit on me or talk shit on Nick Mirror without having an actual idea of the shit that we've actually contributed to and the roles we played in the people that they love and listen to his life. You know what I mean? Right. Does Is like the juice situation an example of something that it, it, it hurt at that time that you weren't necessarily as involved business-wise as you wanted to be? I was never really... I never really had the relationship with Juice. Mm. Whenever Nick started working with Juice, I was still on the internet, bro. I was still selling tight beats. So like I wasn't thinking like I didn't know the I didn't the world of developing artists. I didn't care. Mm. I was just like, man, fuck that shit. I'm I'm running it up online. Why do I care about signing developing artists? So Nick and them, they just wanted to work with artists because they were young kids and just wanted to work. So they found this kid. Side piece, aka DT, my producer found Juice, and there's people who have real industry jobs who found Juice World, and they say, "I got the job because I found Juice." Man, the fuck out of here! Mm. The kid in Seattle found Juice World with 200 followers, right? And helped develop him to what he is now, yeah. or what he, you know what I mean? But the, like, do you? Feel I was. Ne- I'm just saying, I was never, I was never really involved in the Juice shit. Right. Like, I was there to make sure the business on Nixon was handled and all that shit, and like, Nick loves Juice and DT loves Juice, and there was never like beef and all that shit i think it was just like the minute that they were working and they were doing everything how do you go from producing records with somebody and like uploading the songs for them mm. doing the cover art for them to a label coming in and like strong arm in the situation and saying like no we don't need you to do this no more we got this mm. no we don't need you to do this no more we got that oh you're you're doing this you're charging this much for this all right bet we'll have someone remake that you know mm. what i mean like disrespectful shit to like fuck up their relationship when in reality, it was never Juice and it was never Nick. It was never nobody. It's just politics, bro. And it's crazy though because there's so much money to be made that from super early on. And they were always the cool. No, no, no. They were always involved. cool and shit. Like, I feel like the the label for sure didn't want us working together because obvious reasons and obvious shits happen. Where like I've been in studio sessions with somebody from the label and they'll say something smart. You know what I mean? Like a whole different artist session, some shit like that. But. Juice and Nick still they they talked and they worked and they did their thing and they created history, bro. Like they did their thing, mm. and I feel like we all kind of left our mark on that in some way. Like everybody played a a role, mm. like some bigger than others, some larger than others. But like that's just like a once in a lifetime thing. I know there's like a lot of confusion about exactly what happened that that day with Juice when he passed, but overall, in a general sense, I mean, Juice was not in probably great health at that time as a result of the drugs. Do you feel like that's something like when, when you sign an artist that there's, there needs to be more accountability or that people really need to like stop just accepting that a young artist is just abusing drugs and do something about it. Or I'm I not, mean, I'm not going to speak on the juice shit. Cause I don't know. And mm-hmm. I didn't have the relationship with juice like that. And I'm good friends with Bibby and I'm mm-hmm. good friends with like people that were close to that situation. And I'm, you know, Nick is my producer. That's like my best friend right there. And he was very, felt very strongly about it. So I'm not going to speak on the juice shit, but I can speak on the label shit with drugs. I think it all just boils down to, and not speaking on juice situations has nothing to do with juice. I just think it just comes to the people around you. Mm. I think it just comes to like friends, you know, like you got best friends, you got people who they remember you and you wasn't shit and you come in, you get a, you get a deal, you get some money, you blow up and then they don't want to tell you no and miss their opportunity. Mm. So they're not going to tell you no when's, when's too much. You know what I mean? It's just you got to eliminate the yes men around you. And it's it's kind of crazy, though, because it's like what is the more empathetic thing for somebody like you to do if you met an artist tomorrow and they were like the most incredible artist and you knew they could be huge, their music was incredible, but they had a bad drug problem. Should you sign them and then try to help them or should you just be like, no, I'm not going to sign them until they get their shit together knowing that somebody else is going to sign them? Nah, but... I don't think it even looks like that. I think it all comes to, I got to just, every every case is different. There's people who got demons and they got shit that they, you know, they abuse and shit like that, but you would never know. Mm. And then there's people to where it's just like crazy. You know what I mean? I think it's just meeting people and talking to people. Like if they understand and they need help with that problem, I'm there to help. Mm. But I don't like getting into people's problems because you never know what people been through. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm here. People come up to me and like, Hey, bro, I want to get help with this situation. I want to get that. And I'm here with support. Mm. 
but I'm not going to sit here and stick my nose in your business and kind of like shove it down your throat how you need to live your life. You know what I mean? Like, it kind of puts people in a weird situation in the industry because it's like, I don't never look at shit for money. I don't never look at shit about the, I always chase the opportunity. Every artist I've signed or found or whatever, they were not somebody who was big on world star, big doing this shit, every label wanted. It was kids that we really found and we really work with and developed something crazy about. So it's like you get in before the fame, you get in before the money ruins them, you get in before the clout ruins them, you get in before the bitches that they've been wanting to fuck their whole life is now in their DMs asking to fuck them. You know what I mean? Like, mm. You get to see how people are. I'm not like I'm not in the business of going and finding people I don't have a connection with. Mm. I'm, I don't. I don't. I will never sign somebody just the fact I can make a lot of money off them. Right. I sign somebody about the fact that like, do I believe in them? Do I have a vision for it? Am I? How much work am I gonna have to put into this? You know mm. what I mean? Like you would any other investment you make. Mm. Mm, time is the most valuable investment for me. Mm. Like, how much time is it gonna take to break this artist? Right. How much of my time in a day to day basis is it going to take to develop this artist? But what's the, what, what's the ultimate thing that you feel like you're building to? Do you want to be like the dude who has, you know, the label that has, you know, 50 of the biggest artists that came out over the past 10 years, like 10 years from now? What, is that your goal is to like really define yourself by how many artists you are able to develop and break? Or would it mean more to you even to have like the one Drake versus like 50? you know, 1% yeah. of Drake's. I feel like the problem with that is people are looking at it like the wrong way. You're already going in with like expectation or like a, a goal in mind. Like my goal, I achieved that shit a long time ago, bro. This is me. This is me having fun. Anything that comes, I could fall off tomorrow. I cannot get another placement. I'm like very, very appreciative of like where I've gotten and where everybody around me has gotten and what we've built and where we got. I don't look at it like just how other people look at it with that shit, bro. There's mm. never nothing like that. Right, because, I mean, you have enough money that you could probably just chill on the beach or whatever if we weren't on quarantine. Um, but you're still kind of in the trenches actually working on music every night. But there's you people who don't. I'm probably one of the only people who work how I work. Right. There's executives, bro, who will sign an artist. This is your budget. This is what you got to do. Yeah. This is your day-to-day -day person. This is who you're going to work with. If you have any questions regarding studio time, videos, anything that pertains to being an artist that you need to talk to the label, mm. this is who you talk to. It's a different business because you sign, you know, a lot of people and then just sort of leave it up to chance versus what you do where you very much sort of micromanage what's going on. Yeah, but I mean, like, everybody, I'm just passionate about it. My goal with this shit, bro, is I just want to, I guess I just want people to, I want to be like Jimmy, bro. I want to be like Jimmy Iovine, mm. Interscope. I want to have every album in the top top ten, number one, mm. number two, number three. I want to have every album on my shit, every genre. Mm. I just signed a country artist. Really? I signed a country artist. How the hell did you even find that? He's from Canada. His name's Turbo. 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 Okay. And he's from Canada, so it's not racist. <laughs> why, would, why would Turbo be racist? Nah, bro. I'm saying, like, you know, that there's a stigma with like country people and shit like that. Like, should be going. If you sign somebody from the South, like, oh, okay, yeah. you know how it should be going. They'd be thinking they make country music, they're racist and shit. But he's no, like, I don't think Canada's very racist for the most part. I just, nah, it's just a joke that he's not yeah. from the South, so it's not racist. No, that is good. No, I was just wondering. I thought it was about the name. Um, oh, nah, Turbo. <laughs> but yeah, bro. I just, that's, that's my goal with that but shit. But is that the inevitable conclusion of uh, Internet Money and you in particular sort of being known for like the rock beats, the guitar beats that you would eventually just be like, I'm going to sign a fucking country singer, dude? No. And do you feel like that's bro, an unfair stereotype? Yes, bro. We don't. <laughs> We all use guitars. All of everybody in the money, we all grew up playing guitar and doing that shit. But I don't mm -hmm. think that's what we, I feel like that's just what we got known for because one of our biggest songs was Lucid Dreams. Right. And the whole guitar shit following but that But there was bullshit. like a time period where it felt like a lot of those sort of like pop punk type beats were, were real popping and that, yeah. that style like feels super played out to me already. There's originators in that shit, bro. Like yeah. the, Smoke Sacks, one of them. True, we, true. We, 100%. We, like, I, I feel like... I wouldn't say we're an originator of it, but I feel like we helped kind of push it forward with it. Right. But I'll never sit here and say we took credit for guitar beats and doing that shit because everybody, the little baby doing goddamn guitar beats. Yeah, that's true. So it's like, I feel like it's just like the instrument of the decade right now. Right. I guess. I don't know. It's weird though because like guitar based music, like rock music is kind of an all time low. Yeah. But I mean, it's because people don't want to be rock stars no more. Mm. Yeah, that, that like the rock stars dream. don't want to be rock stars. <laughs> I guess. Another classic interview in the books. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and head on over to nojumper.com to support. Appreciate y'all.